welcome to lecture 31 which is the last lecture on the GPS and in this lecture we will cover various applications, possible applications of the GPS in civil engineering and outside civil engineering. So, let us begin the lecture. Uh, when this GPS were launched, uh, you know there was a restriction on the uh, uh, availability of the right kind of the signal. But later on that restriction was lifted and uh, these uh, were giving us very good accuracy for required for various applications. They were developed for military applications initially as we all know, but uh, later on when the uh, selective availability was lifted then uh, uh, they were used for many civilian applications and at present the number of civilian users are much more than what we use in the military. But uh, there are certain applications which are uh, very normal kind of applications uh, require simple device and uh, you can uh, use the device and uh, get the results from there. But there are applications where we require very very high accuracy and we have to derive the results for that application. So, that will cost us more because maybe we have to buy more than one set of devices and the device is expensive. So, let us see what are the possible applications of this particular technology. So, broadly you know if we see the broad categories in which we can divide these applications of GPS technology, it could be uh, like location very important position of any point is very important whether we are talking about the uh, mapping part because we require the location or whether we are developing any applications which deals with the location. So, any applications which is dependent on the coordinate system x y coordinate system we can develop the applications which call location based applications. Navigation a very important application and people world over are using uh, this for navigational purpose like moving from one place to another and knowing to the going to the unknown area with the help of the GPS devices. So, very useful application. Tracking is another that when uh, people are moving when the things are moving when the goods are moving we can track this with the help of the GPS devices. Earlier it was not possible unless the things reach to the destination, but now it is uh, intermediate uh, tracking uh, before it reaches to the destination can also be done with the help of these coordinate systems. Uh, mapping uh, in all mapping uh, in all thematic maps in all topographical maps in all engineering maps we require coordinates we have to uh, show the coordinates of the points, we have to show the height of the point. So, this is very very important tool to create various kinds of maps. Then timing, uh, bringing the precise timing to the world. So, they are these are some of the uh, broad categories of the applications of the technology. But if we look at the field you know what are those areas in which we can use there are areas under the commercial sector, there are un, uh, the government sector is there, there are recreational sector is there. So, there are very large number of applications which are listed here um, from military to automotive, navigation part, agriculture, environmental, location based survey. So, here lot of industries the private sector the commercial sector has come up who are providing this service government is using in very large number of application in very big projects the GPS technology. But there are large number of user the general public where they are using for recreational purpose. So, recreation could be either we are using for our sports activity we are using for fun, we are using for outdoor activities. So, whether it is hiking or hunting or fishing or boating or maybe playing the golf. So, these are you know recreational a list is very very long where GPS has found uh, its applications. 
apart from this uh, there are areas which are you know totally different so from these uh, areas and the areas which i have shown in the earlier slide one can see that today uh, the list this list is very long and it is no more uh, it is a mapping device but it has a um, very useful applications in very large number of fields so whether we are uh, actually here talking of the search and rescue operation whether we are talking of the fishing we are adventuring uh, in the wildlife mapping so every every sector wherever it deals with the location wherever it deals with the coordinate systems wherever it deals with the movement tracking we are using the gps for all this operational applications so let's take one by one and discuss further largest application to a civil engineer could be uh, surveying and mapping because earlier these coordinates were actually computed with the help of a large number of observations so observations were related to the angle observations were related to the elevations leveling observations were related to the distance measurement and the direction measurement so once we have these four broad categories of the observations they were adjusted together and then there were a computational procedure to calculate so this is a well defined given in the surveying book but this is a wonderful device which can give us the coordinate we are not doing any computation but what we are doing we are taking precautions we are using proper method we are using proper device so that we can get right uh, coordinates we can get accurate coordinates and we can use that for desired applications so for surveying carry out the map whether it is a topographical map or it is a thematic map for some applications we take this instrument out in the field and and collect the x y and z coordinates and then using the capabilities of the software because the software will pick up the x y z z coordinates as well as the attribute attached to those x y z coordinate and it will generate the map of the whole area so when you are collecting the data in surveying and mapping uh, you can see actually on the screen of the device also uh, the kind of a line map or a graphical map on the screen uh, the features along which you have collected the data so when it comes to the surveying and mapping it's a wonderful equipment which is drastically saving the cost and time so one person can carry out the survey for the whole area you don't require actually multiple teams to carry out the survey work and it can give you very very high accuracy provided we are using uh, right approach now this shows that a combination of the two devices so sometimes the gps for a particular application may not be sufficient in itself so here total station which is a device in use in modern surveying equipment so total station and gps uh, both are used as you can see in the top diagram together they are used so sometimes we don't get good vertical clearance good signals there you can use capability of the total station and sometimes we don't have the good horizontal clearance where we can use the capability of the gps devices so it has been found that the combination of the two is the optimum in order to carry out the uh, field survey work in the field and collect the three dimensional data so the person uh, is collecting the data for a bridge and a road and the, the lower slide shows the point cloud data x y z data which has been collected for uh, the um, survey for surveying the road and the bridge and one can see different features on this so this is a point cloud data and uh, uh, now with the help of that point cloud data you one can carry out the measurement also so uh, there there is a device uh, instead of carrying the two instruments to the field separately a total station and a gps and uh, looking into the market this combined device has come up where on the top of the total station a gps is marked so a gps is marked on the top of the total station and then 
on the same tripod on the same set of location you can take the observations either from GPS or from the total station depending upon the situation and circumstances. So, this is called uh, a smart station. So, a smart station is a station which will give us the digital data which will give us data uh, for multipurpose. So, this is a multipurpose data we our work is not held up if we are not getting good signal as you have learned multi path will obstruct my signals. High rise objects will obstruct my signal. If I am working under the bridge, I will not get good signals. So, there I can use the capability of the total station device and yet continue my work. So, there are situation in the field where uh, we are stuck with the GPS, then we can go ahead using the horizontal clearance with total station. Otherwise, we continue with the GPS and carry out the work. So, both are complementing and supplementing the each other in the field that is the advantage of using this device for collecting the data. Now, this GPS is uh, used for taking the x, y and z coordinate system whether we are planning a new township or whether we are doing the survey work for a new road area. So, here you can see that the receiver is open to the sky and receiving the signal and then uh, uh, here on the uh, display devices the user can interact and record the data. Now, also there is a radio beacon system at the backpack and the function of this radio beacon system is to immediately transmit the data. So, that is what we call the real time data transmission. And these devices are called real time surveying equipment because immediately one can get the data, one can see the behavior and the pattern of the data or the error if it is present in the data and give the instruction to the person uh, to continue the work or to repeat the observation. So, you can get directly in the real time observations. Now, these GPS has given us the flexibility to measure very, very small deflection which cannot be observed with our eye or some other devices. Because uh, of the uh, nature of the deflection because this is so small in nature when uh, we have the bridge and there is a heavy load which is passing over the bridge. So, you can find that uh, there is a deflection which is uh, maximum at the center point of the bridge. So, here we have actually uh, a base station marked and the rover which are fitted along the bridge at several points where we want to measure the deflection and uh, particularly uh, in India we find that uh, many of the bridges are old they require uh, complete replacement a new bridge or require major repair. So, we can find out how much is the deflection when uh, suppose on a railway bridge the train is passing with the full load whether that deflection is within the uh, tolerance limit or not. If it is not, then this is the alarming situation. So, these kind of studies, um, the deformation or the deflection in the dam or bridge, which cannot be observed minutely, so minutely with the naked eye or with some other instrument, we can do with the help of the GPS devices. For basic navigation purpose, when you are moving from one point to the another, what you need is the position where you are and where you want to go and also the direction. So, position and directions were important actually to reach from one point to the another point. But today this navigation uh, which we are doing with the help of the GPS it takes the coordinate systems of the starting point and the coordinate system of the last point and the intermediate point and, and help us in the navigation. So, we know this particular application and uh, word over this has been used in uh, the vehicle in the cars and we can see the entire map on our screen and this uh, map is helping us. This map uh, which has been created from the high resolution images and then using the capabilities of the GPS and GIS. This navigational 
map has been created which helps us in movement to the unknown area. It gives us approximately the time also, how much time it will take if we know what will be the speed of the vehicle when we want to move from one place to another. So, it is, it is helping us a lot because when you are um, particularly on the highway and you are lost somewhere and you want to reach to a particular destination, this is your best companion at that time to give you the direction. So, navigating a given location, suppose this is your origin point here and that is the destination point where one has to reach, then it can also tells you the path to be followed and it also depends upon the again location and the coordinate systems supported by the satellite imaged uh, mapping. So, this from origin to destination it is indicating this black line is indicating the path which can be followed actually to go to this particular destination. Not necessary this is shortest path, but it is the feasible path to go to that particular area under the given circumstances. So, navigation uh, to from one place to another place it is helping us to carry out the movement. Now, when we are talking of the navigation, it is not just the road navigation. It could be air navigation in the aircraft, it could be the sh uh, ship navigation or it could be the vehicular based navigation. So, you can see in this particular slide here that the same set of satellites are actually communicating with the different receivers which are fitted in the different devices, air, aircraft and the ship and then and they are sending the signal different uh, constellation of the satellite and then these signals are converted into the coordinate systems and they are helping us in the navigation part. So, as far as the aeroplanes are concerned, you know they were uh, using uh, the GPS based uh, you know navigation since long time, but the, with the improvement in the technology, the general aviation. Uh, has become much much precise with the help of the now takeoff and landing has become much much precise uh, with the help of the GPS. When you are collecting the data in the field for a larger area, then it is not necessary that they take the instrument physically to the field and particularly if it is a geodetic based device, it is bit heavier to carry in the field and work for 8 to 10 hours in the field. Uh, by transporting it physically. You can collect the data in the mobile mode also. So, this shows that uh, the instrument is fitted on the vehicle, this is the receiver plate and this is the controller which is fitted in the normal vehicle. You do not require any specialized kind of a vehicle in order to mount these devices and uh, you can continue with these devices, uh, collect the data in a normal way. That means, this the person who is driving the car will simply drive the car and it will set the instrument in the auto mode and the observations uh, will be taken as the vehicle is driven to the area. So, large area can be covered in the smallest possible time when the instrument is fitted in on a mobile platform. So, there is a possibility that the instrument uh, you can fit on the mobile platform and still collect very large uh, uh, data for a large area in the shortest possible time. Now, when the car was moving on the roads, different roads, you like to see that data. So, here in the background is the high resolution satellite image and high resolution satellite image that data is superimposed because both are georeferenced together. So, exactly the road will fit over the road which is seen on the satellite image. So, you can see the road network here uh, it is shown in green and the red color. So, the red colors are those dense area basically in the heart of the city where the GPS observations have been taken for a long time. Means what? The vehicle stopped there, vehicle stopped because of the traffic, because of the traffic congestion or maybe there was a traffic light. Uh, because of that the vehicle is stopped. So, all that red zones are showing basically me the critical areas. If we have to do some kind of a uh, traffic management planning, probably these are those bottleneck areas where we can focus. The green areas are those areas the vehicle moved and was moving very smoothly uh, without much of the waiting on the road. 
but the red areas are those areas which requires basically the focus attention as far as the traffic movement and the management is concerned so we can use this data for traffic management also we can analyze this data real time when we are moving in the vehicle and collecting the data then we will like to see what is the uh, pattern of the data what is the behavior of the data so we can have a, a small a computer attached to the vehicle itself a small processing device attached to the vehicle itself and we can do the real time processing of the gps data you can create a 3d model of the data you can create the profile and just take the decision on the ground itself about the quality of the data now there are specialized uh, vehicles which are using gps so this is a gps or a dgps Uh, which is fitted in the vehicle along with the other tools and devices and this particular vehicle for example we call it a automated road survey system arss is the short form automated road survey system that means it will collect the data for the road sector so here uh, in addition to gps we have laser scanner and other devices which will give me um, very large Uh, data set about the road from different sources but what is the function of the gps is that when the vehicle is moving on the road it will give me the coordinates of the points where the vehicle is moving and all the data which i am collecting from the other device like digital camera is there laser scanner is there i can attach those coordinate systems to that data and this will help me now integrating this data set with the other data set which is geo reference so i know the coordinates of the data whether it is a point data or it is a photographic data uh, with the help of the gps which is fitted in the automated road survey system so here you can see there is a gps antenna and everything is automatic you are not operating it you are simply sitting there watching the data which is collected through the different devices in your software system in the processing system which is also fitted in the vehicle so that is the kind of a advantage nowadays we can derive from this now this shows the uh, typically uh, a vehicle location system how we can get the location of a vehicle uh, so here i am showing you a truck where um, the gps is fitted in this truck here in the moving vehicle and then we have a communication network communication tower and then there is a base station central station somewhere when the vehicle is moving it is receiving the signal from the surrounding satellites and after receiving the signal from the surrounding satellite it will compute the location and this location via communication network via the tower this will be transmitted to the base station and at the person at the base station will immediately will know the location now when the truck is continuously moving this location will keep on changing so that changing position you know as long as it is in the vicinity of this tower then uh, when it is moving it will come uh, in contact with the another communication tower and keeps on transmitting the data to the base station and then there is a basically uh, location which could be monitored uh, uh, with the help of those different coordinate systems which are available now in the software so on this technique on the basis of the coordinate system which we can monitor when we fit this device in a particular vehicle uh, we can develop a location based service so all the location based services are based on that and what we require is we require uh, certain other infrastructure certain other communication devices are also required and this diagram shows that how we can work on a wireless internet applications to develop the location based service where the gps is playing a very very important role so any services is required if i could locate uh, the position of the customer and if i can find out my position then probably 
the going to that particular place and providing the service has become much much easier nowadays. Now for entertainment purpose or for personal use the people have used for uh, boating and hiking you know when they are going out uh, to a known area or to a forested area. So they uh, carry the GPS. Now these GPS are available uh, in a uh, you know this device is available for hikers, for hunters, for snowmobilers, mountain bikers and this either you can keep it in your backpack this device or maybe you know there is a cap here. The person is wearing a cap and this uh, receiver is fitted in the cap itself and it is continuously receiving the signal. So, you are not occupied, you are free, you are just wearing the cap with the GPS fitted in it or you are keeping the GPS in your back track and then uh, moving with the free hand to the area and collecting the data. That means somebody can locate your position and you know your position so that you are not lost in the unknown area. Automobile industry, you know the uh, in automobile industry it has a very very big applications and uh, almost all the costly vehicle now nowadays are using this navigation system which is a GPS based system. So GPS is helping us um, in the boats, in automobile, in the ship you know and we are using actually this system similar to the cellular phones, these handheld devices we are using. So when we are using it for navigation system it will increase the efficiency of the driver. A person who is driving the vehicle it will definitely increase the efficiency because it will follow the right path and it will uh, 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 the GPS will provide the guidelines. Driver may not uh, pay much attention to the road but GPS will time to time will uh, try to actually give the information, transmit the information and uh, they will help the drivers uh, actually to maneuver over the city when they are lost in the area. So, it will guide the movement of the persons when the person is moving. Fleet tracking and management is another big area you know those who are involved in the business and they have uh, taxi business or they have lots of uh, truck operators are there, lot of trucks are moving from one place to the another place and you want to really track the movement from the starting point to the end point and in between also how much stop and how long the stop was and whether that particular fleet or whether a particular truck has crossed over a particular police check post or not that also one can observe. So, there are very very large number of applications to track the different kind of vehicles when they are moving from one place to another. So, this is showing you the example here of a moving bus. So, bus actually is moving from one place to the another place here and in the background is the map. So, there is a road on which the bus was supposed to move. So, it can show here the stop of the bus then there is another bus stop third one and the fourth one and the next one. Now, you know that the bus was not supposed to stop at this particular stop. So, this we call as the illegal stop because the coordinates uh, gives us that information the bus is stopped at that point. Not only uh, at what location the bus stopped, but we also know how much time uh, it has stopped at a particular location. So, uh, this has a lot of applications uh, uh, in the movement of the people on those uh, buses. So, you can see that uh, at present uh, where is the bus, what location the bus is, in what direction it is traveling, what is the speed of the travel, where is the next stop and how long is the stop. So, that all everything can be monitored and uh, this uh, is being done uh, nowadays in reality particularly the children buses when they go to school that the school bus people like to monitor. Right. Emergency response system has a big applications. So, in case of emergency uh, whether it is a disaster or it is a fire or it is uh, some kind of a rights. So, if uh, the uh, 
emergency system or uh, maybe uh, a fire brigade uh, maybe a police uh, has to or maybe a hospital uh, when if it has to move along a road and it has to reach to the destination in the shortest possible time so that can be done so this emergency response system the fire brigade police station and the uh, ambulance vans they are actually using this kind of uh, uh, gps based device in order to find out for example this is the route uh, the fire has taken place so what is the route for the fire brigade to reach to the destination and which is the nearest hospital location so that can be determined with the help of the map and the gps coordinate system so this is the route which is showing to go to that particular location now there are very large number of location based applications which have been developed now over a period of time and those are if you want to suppose wanted to locate which is the nearest atm or which is the nearest bank or where is the nearest petrol station or where is the nearest restaurant when we are moving out on the road that we can do that very very easily so uh, location based billing services have also come up now with the help of this because we know the locations of the now uh, mobile phone tracking is also based on this the location based service so uh, this gps is being used uh, in as i told you in emergency service and in a uh, lot of countries police service ambulance service and fire services are using uh, the capabilities of the gps and gis based maps to cut down the emergency response time to reach to the destination in the shortest possible time and do the dynamic routing also suppose one has to move to the uh, place immediately so uh, this gps they are employed in the drone uav unmanned aerial vehicles so this unmanned aerial vehicle in addition to the other sensors they have the gps fitted into it so that uh, whenever the data is collected from the these airborne systems we know the coordinates of that particular point where the data is fitted so this has a very good applications in the gps based survey as well in the field of agriculture in the field of agriculture uh, farmers in many developed countries they are using to track the pitch of their land while preparing them from the crops so uh, in the uh farming systems also it has lot of use so harvesting of the crop or tracking of the cattle or digging the land you know this is being used uh, in a big way the gps because you know the uh, how much depth uh, we have to cut down the ground so that also you can determine mobile phone industry all these cellular phone companies now are using those gps chips actually they are installed in the cellular element so, so so those chips are also giving us the crude coordinates of the points we have the watches available now where the gps system is fitted and again there is a small chip which can give us some crude coordinates of the points in the watch then it has lot of application in the military field as we can see that uh, the initial uh, start of this gps or invention of the gps was done for military application so for navigation and positioning application in the land sea and air in the space the military can help tracking the movement of the soldier as well as the missiles so this has a very very useful applications because they need very precise coordinate systems there are other applications and those applications could be environmental applications means if we want to study the coastal erosion as we know the water level is rising we can measure the rise in the water level we can measure the uh, coastal erosion area and other changes which are taking place in the land we can also in the geographical sea levels difference in geological mapping we can create uh, more accurate maps of the geological folds and faults and the thrust lines because they keep on changing uh, and spreading with respect to time so that minor uh, minor change we can observe 
then mining and construction activity so they are helping the workers in guiding the uh, equipment in mining and construction activities also uh, it will keep on guiding with respect to the coordinate system natural disaster to assess the damage to the structures after a disaster takes place uh, so that also uh, basically we can use the gps now what is the future of the this particular technology as we can see that there are very very large number of application of this technology uh, not only for mapping but for the benefit of the society for the benefit of the general public so it has a very good future as far as the um, geomatics engineering is concerned as far as the other applications are concerned uh, as civil engineer maybe you know we are uh, having good application in the smart buildings we have good applications in developing the smart cities then monitoring the crime the police is using integration with the mobile integration with the bluetooth technology for casting the weather then in robotics because the entire robotics is also based on automation and then we are when we are talking about the the driverless car when the there is no driver the car is moving on the road and uh, the car is smart enough actually to change the lane and also so this is all done with the help of the coordinate systems and the mapping devices intelligent traffic systems resource mapping and monitoring and the disaster control so these are some of the areas where the gps could be used in more in depth in the future and can derive the benefits out of it so i think this is all thank you very much